Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Uh, first of all, let me introduce myself. I am a senior software developer from Ukraine, Kyiv. I work for Intetix company, which you may know as a Belarusian company too. Um, today we will talk about expression problem. And we will start from the history behind it. So first of all, uh, it was motivated by the paper which was presented uh, at the European Conference on the Object-Oriented Programming in 1998 by Krishnamurti and others. And uh, they discussed there two things. First of all, it's uh, that the, the, the objects, and the second one are the tools which uh, we are defined to work with those objects. Uh, and uh, Commonly, objects are recursively specified types of data. Uh, also, Krishnamurti and others uh, said that uh, it's clear that commonly in the functional languages, it's easy to add new tools. So you kind of define some algebraical data type and then just uh, pattern match on the subtypes. So it's easy to add new uh, functions on that. But when you uh, will uh, extend the type, you will need to rewrite every tool uh, which have been written before. In the OOP, the situation is the opposite of that, and it's easy to add new objects or tools. We will see that uh, soon on the examples. So, and the question in that paper was, can we e easily extend both objects and tools, actually? Uh, and Krishnamurti and team solved that by uh, presenting an uh, extensible visitor pattern. But uh, Philip Wadler, which, uh, who was on, that, uh, on the same conference, he uh, noticed that they used casts, which uh, have not guaranteed the static uh, typed safety. And he reformulated and coin a name for the problem and named it expression problem. So it actually was really old problem which even Reynolds uh, talked about in his books. And the goal was to define data type by cases where one can add new cases to the data type and new functions over the data type without recompiling existing code and while retaining static type safety, uh, which means no cast actually. Uh, we can deduce four main properties inside the, of the expression problem. First, it's extensibility in both dimensions. So you can independently extend objects and also actions on those objects. Static type safety, as we told already. Also, we should, um, shouldn't introduce no modification of the old code or duplication of that code. And also, we need to have separate compilation and type checking. Let's start with an example written on Java. Uh, so first of all, suppose we have uh, a really simple problem. We have uh, interface expression, which could be evaluated with uh, eval method, and also a few two classes, lead and add, which implements that uh, interface. You can see that add class uh, reuses two expressions, left and right expression, and represents addition. And uh, lead uh, represents a lead integer literal, which uh, resembles just like integer number, and that's all. Uh, we also define two uh, eval functions inside those classes, and that the standard object-oriented oriented, uh, uh, approach to write uh, the to, to write the system which supports like a basic uh, structures with numbers and additions. Uh, and what is the problem with that uh, approach? It's hard to add new actions here. Because if we'll, we'll try to add new action to the interface exp, then we will need to add it to the every class which implements that interface. So we will need to rewrite the old and existing code, and that will not uh, suffice as a solution to the expression problem. How to overcome it? 
we can try the visitor pattern. Visitor pattern uh, could be implemented like that. You define one method per each class. In this example, it's lit and add, the same names, but with a small letter. And uh, in, we change our exp interface to this, to have the accept method which will accept visitor. In that case, for example, we should write at a class in that way. It, sh it will accept visitor, call the add method of that visitor, and recursively uh, call accept methods of the left and right expression expressions which it contains. Now it's easy to add new actions, because you can just create more and more visitors, but it's hard to add new objects. So it kind of dualized the problem. It inverted everything from upside down and from down below. So uh, it's hard to add new objects. And how to solve this problem? One, the solution which I want to show you uh, was presented on the same conference in uh, 2012 year, and uh, it called extensibility for the masses, practical extensibility with object algebras. And what is that object al al algebra actually? That's the same interface which we used for the visitors. Hmm, strange, but uh, how can uh, we solve that problem not using the accept methods. What can we do with that interface, first of all? Uh, in the world of OOP, we often use design patterns, and it's kind of common folklore there. Um, but as a functional programmer, programmer me personally, I uh, didn't know uh, their manifestations inside the functional languages. And we can see that, for example, this interface could be used as the factory. Uh, if we define the class like that uh, and set the generic type to the exp type, we will get two methods we'll, which will generate literals or add, add in expressions. Also, with the same interface, we can retroactively implement new interfaces. For example, consider if you want to add the printing action. You can do the next thing. Of course, it's a big clutter of code, but don't worry. It just says that uh, we are implementing that algebra with uh, generic type set to iPrint and defining print, print functions for every uh, function from that algebra. So it's for it literals and addition expressions. But it's the same as the visitor, actually. It uh, haven't changed much. So how we avoid the accept method? It's done by uh, abstracting out uh, the structure of the object into the new function, which uh, is called exp here. It, it is also the same as the accept method. It just uh, uh, receive the visitor and calls its method, but in some structured way. You can uh, generate such, such struct structures after parsing some files uh, using the factory we declared before, and to not use uh, something like a predefined structure like that, but it's just for the sake of the example. Uh, so in the function test, you can see that we are creating a uh, new print object, int print, and then just interpret uh, the expression which is contained inside exp function with the algebra print, and then just call print function. Of course, it's, it could be done in uh, the more neat way. Uh, we can uh, just remove the interface I print and just uh, consider converting literals and uh, add an expression to the strings directly. It will be easier and more neat. But how to add new objects now? It's actually simple too. You just need to declare two new classes. For example, if you want to 
uh, supply the customer with some bulls and if statements, you can do that. You can inst instantiate uh, two classes and uh, create new interface which will extend our previous algebra and include two more methods with bool and if uh, functions inside of it. Then you need to, for example, if you want to extend printing, we just can't uh, re-extend our int print class and uh, redo everything as it was done before. So we overcome the visitor pattern. We don't need accept methods now and uh, actually expression problem was solved there. So I guess we can stop for a minute here. Do you have any questions? Yes. <laughs> it's a grumpy cat. The, replace, the idea of the whole transformation is that you replace a data type with a method call like in take this final encoding of free monad, right? Uh, could you repeat once more? The idea of the whole new encoding of data types is that you replace actual data objects with methods, functions. Mm -hmm. Right? Almost like that. It, uh, yes, yes, actually yes. Accept methods is inside the data structures was replaced with those algebras, right? But we still like need those data types, those classes uh, to act on them. Because, uh, yeah, we, we just need the, uh, okay, we, need data types there, like classes which we have before, and uh, they were not replaced by the function. The function replaces only the accepting the visitor functionality there. But what's the need for the data types if you have everything encoded in the methods already? Uh, maybe you will need some structure too, because you need somehow to generate it. You will not do that by the hand. It's hard. Of course, of course, but it just depends on the way you need to store information, I guess. If you don't need to store it, you don't need data structures. You can do that on the fly, apply the algebra and that's all. But if you will need some recursive data structure, you will need to use the classes which contain inside of that the, the similar classes, like inside the add implementation. So it's but perfectly it, okay to have data to there. How can we use and traverse uh, data types, data structure? Uh, how would I, what? How would you basically traverse, like apply a function, like you print with, when you have a data structure, not the algebra? Okay, if that's a data structure, let's come back. I mean, without the algebra, the data structure itself is pretty much useless. Not, am I not right? Yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe. Yeah, actually, actually, yes. I, I guess yes. Okay, okay. Thank you. Yeah, I, I agree with you. So actually, we don't need that. But maybe for just for the sake of the format, you know, just to store it for in the like data types. Okay, let's move forward. Okay, now you may say, and that's all. That's all presentation. A lot of OOP code in there, and it's like functional programming conference. Uh, and I will say, no, uh, let's go to the theory behind it. Actually, the uh, almost all solutions to the expression problem involves algebras. And uh, I decided that, as uh, one famous English proverb says, give a man a fish and you will feed him a day, but if you will teach him to fish, you will uh, feed him for a lifetime. So I decided to talk about math a bit. 
Uh, first of all, let's start with some algebraic signatures. It's just a set of functions which are parameterized by some type E. Then we can define on that F algebra, which is a triple like set and two explicitly defined functions lit and add. In that case, uh, lit will, uh, type E is just a pair of X and Y and uh, literal function is a constant function which always return X and add function is the same function but with two arguments which will return the X. This algebra is degenerate and messy. Degenerate because it uh, doesn't respect the type, uh, the arguments inside of the functions, and actually those functions are constant. And messy because uh, the actual type E, it's, it contains Y which is not used anywhere. And we can ask ourselves, uh, how we can make that uh, not degenerate and not messy. Actually, it's done synthetically uh, like that. So you just define functions lead and add by just explicitly labeling the result with the same labels like lead and add. And so syntactically it will generate big type which will contain all the result of the applying the constructors to the integer type. Yeah, it's a bit syntactic approach, so let's go more formal now. Uh, we can describe algebraic signature as a number of the functions where T1 and Tn are functors, or other words, type constructors. Then uh, we can use the isomorphism between uh, the uh, product of the functors and uh, either type and see that actually we can replace that signature with the sum of those functors on the type E and receive the function from if E to E. For example, for our previous uh, example, uh, we will have the next functor is just int plus uh, the product of E. The actual representation in Haskell is written down below. It's just xf uh, by e, which equals uh, either value int or at ee. E. But it's, it's kind of useless. We want to define uh, recursive types with uh, uh, any depths of uh, the type constructors in it. So can we get a recursive type? And I say, yes, we can with fixed constructor. Fixed constructor is a constructor with, which ties uh, the recursive node on the functor, actually. You, if you remove the data word and in word on that, you will see that actually what does it mean? That fix f is actually equals to f from fix f. So it's kind of fixed point, like it's said in mathematics. And to define the recursive, uh, recursive type, we, all that we need is just to put, instead of the f here, our functor xf. And we will recursively tie that type. So, and uh, in, the, in the Haskell, uh, and actually in uh, we, we have those recursive types represented by fixed uh, constructors. And there is a uh, very important result, which called Lambic theorem, and uh, in the Haskell version just says that two types are isomorphic, that f from fix f is actually isomorphic to fix f. What does it mean? It just means that we have those two functions, uh, compositions of which are ident identities. First one, unfix, it just peels off uh, the in constructor and uh, take from the fix f the inner value, which has type f fix f. And fix function is, uh, is actually equal, uh, actually is equal to the in constructor. And what that gives to us? 
actually, when we have some recursive data type, we want somehow to interpret it, somehow modify and maybe fold it, right? Like functional programmers. And we can see the next picture. Uh, here we have two uh, F algebras. One with a type fix F inside it, and the other one with type A inside it. Those uh, inside types are called carrier types. And uh, while interpreting our recursive uh, data type, we, which is represented by a uh, function M here, we want to uh, try to interpret it like uh, the, some member of the type A. And to do that, we need to inverse fix arrow to the another direction. And we can do it because uh, Lambert theorem says that it's actually okay to do that. And now we can see that we can define any interpretation M on this uh, recursive data type by supplying only the uh, arrow which is on the right. So only by supplying the one algebra. And that means that actually we can define generalized faults, which are called also catamorphisms from the Greek kata, like downwards. When you uh, go in downwards from big structure to something smaller. Uh, and as you can see from the type definition, it just expects to receive F algebra recursive data type, and it will give you the result. You can actually recognize in that uh, the similarities with the standard fault functions, like for list or binary trees. For example, here, to fault this binary tree, we need to supply two functions. One, to interpret uh, the tip, that, that is the first argument. We need to convert A type to the B, and how to interpret two uh, binary subtrees with how to combine them uh, with a second function. And actually, those pair, pair of those functions is actually isomorphic to the same algebra, FAA here. And uh, in that way, we can define faults for any data structures, structure uh, just by defining uh, the shape of that structure on the one recursion level. Okay, how to use those things actually? Uh, pretty practical usage is described, for example, in this article, data types a la carte, in which uh, Wouter Sviarstra uh, describes the solution of the expression problem using these F algebras, and also giving some inquiries about free monads and how to decompose the big uh, and monolithic IO monad inside Haskell into the smaller ones. It's a very great one. The next article which I would suggest, su suggest to you is uh, Design Patterns as Higher Order Data Type Generic Programs. It's about interpreting design patterns uh, using F algebras. And actually, many patterns inside OOP uh, can be given some sem <coughs> functional semantics using F algebras and recursive data type. For example, uh, pattern composite. Composite is just fix F, recursive data type, and that's all. Visitor is just an F algebra, which you provide to some catamorphism to fold over this composite data structure. Iterator is just a map over the data structure. And etc. etc. We can continue actually. As we have seen, the abstract fabric is just insta instantiated visitor, and that's all. Also, if you like mathematics, I suggest you to, uh, to read Bartosz Milewski Programming Cafe blog. It's very nice for introducing you to the beginnings of the category theory and the usage it entire programming, Haskell, and etc. 
So in conclusion, I wanted to say that as we could see today, uh, F-algebras are a very important instrument which is very powerful and enables us to solve the expression problem and not not on uh, and uh, even more and it gives us even more not only that but uh, whole spectrum uh, and whole a new look onto the old and well-known OP design patterns and could give us more insights in our daily work as a programmers uh, also I wanted to thank you uh, for the sponsorship the company in Tetix and uh, want to say that we currently have open vacancies and if you are interested in work you can come on the after party to me and talk with me I will uh, describe you the position okay that's time for QA thank you Um, I have a question, actually. Yes, yes. Um, so if you have your program described in um, fixed monad, in some point of time... It's not monad. Uh, I, I guess... This... Okay, in, in, um, in uh, F-algebra, in, in terms of Haskell, there is a, a free monad or freer monad, right? Yeah. So yeah. you can just write your program in terms of that the recursive data structure mm -hmm. and then you have to write an interpreter to the uh, to actually execute your program represented as a, as a data structure right yeah so my question is or a problem i'm trying to express is writing this interpreter forces you to put all of the cases in a single place so your interpreter cannot be, uh, you cannot add more objects to your algebra because you have to modify your interpreter which all cases will sit in the, in the same place. Let's say your algebra is like integer additions and multiplications and when you evaluate your program you have to, let's say, pattern match on addition and on multiplication in the same place, in the same function fully or partially defined, but in, in the same source file, right? Mm -hmm. So is there is a way to actually extend your algebra without modifying the single place? Um, I guess that... I, I guess that uh, the answer lies inside that paper. <laughs> Okay. Actually, yes. Uh, this paper. It has the answer. It uses uh, something which called like type injections. Okay. I guess it has some deep connections with Topos theory and something like that because of those. And uh, that will um, give you a chance to extend, extend the types and those algebras freely. Okay. Any more questions? Seems very good. So let's give it thank you one more time. Okay, thank you.